Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Monday, January 30th, 2012. Uh, tonight I'd like to do a quick video overview on, on how to configure and set up freestockcharts.com. Uh, freestockcharts.com, uh, I stumbled, I've been using freestockcharts for several years now, a good, good three years at least, and stumbled across them browsing the web one day, incidentally, came across it and was happy at the time with all the charging services that I was using and I still do use several actually there's there's uh, limitations and shortfalls to shortcomings to all of them but uh, freestockcharts.com has a lot of great features uh, actually I should clarify I do use their paid version TC2000 uh, which has uh, some additional bells and whistles that uh, the free version doesn't of course it doesn't have the ad banners on the right either uh, and it's uh, a lot more configurable if you will. So uh, if you haven't done so already you need to go to freestockcharts.com and just create a user account as the name implies there's no charge to do so and once you have your user account uh, you're gonna log on and it'll look something similar to this um, you might have a, a little bit different uh, screen uh, I think they, the default is I'll show this scrolling ticker uh, I prefer to use that screen real estate for something else it's a little bit busy for my taste uh, so you just go here turn that off and I will spend a lot of time on on this area on the next video that I do I'll probably do a video tomorrow night or sometime later this week uh, because there are just a ton of great features on this side as far as watch list scans a lot the free stock charts can do that really I haven't found uh, some of these features anywhere else uh, but for tonight we are actually going to go to file create new layout and let me move the screen a little bit here and what I'm going to do is maximize this chart to full screen because we're not going to work with any of this tonight we're just going to work on configuring your chart and getting you set up here okay if you'll notice on the top of the screen here you have a window symbols typed in right now I'm using the symbol RWM you can put in whatever you want to work with this and it shows a 10 minute time frame uh, I'm gonna I'm going I'll set this up similar to what I'm using I like to use well, personally I have a monthly chart view all the way down to the one minute but let's for the sake of this example let's start with a weekly chart so go ahead and do that drop down box select weekly and we're going to add a few more charts so next to there this tab you'll see a little what looks like a blank sheet of paper click on that and that will give you a new tab and they're always going to give you the default which is a 10 minute time frame so once again click on that tab left click go over here to the time settings choose let's go with a daily chart once again new tab left click move the mouse over to the time frame let's go now down to an hourly and so forth and so on you can create as many of these tabs as you want to the best of my knowledge I, I don't see any performance or slowdown in my my computer at all uh, I can run 10 of these tabs and it doesn't seem to really slow things down so you know just create a, a an amount that you can manage here maybe we'll go down to now and add a uh, let's do it one minute okay now let's configure this chart a little bit I don't like the look of that I do use candlestick charts uh, if you want to set up a different type of chart we'll go over that in a minute but for now let's just get the look and feel of this chart right uh, I don't need to see this uh, this much uh, on the volume bars uh, it's a lot more real estate being taken up than I'd like to see I want to pay more attention to the price history up here uh, so what I did I'm sorry I'm moving ahead here so I dragged this line down I left clicked on the line when you see the arrows form and you can size it to whatever you want there something else we need to do if you come down all the way here at the bottom you'll notice this blue shaded area represents a time frame and the default on each window when you start a new window they're they're gonna have you zoomed into a pretty close time frame so you want to move your cursor over here hold it down left click hold down and just drag that obviously I'm dragging a little bit ahead but I'm holding my finger down on the button and I will drag it all the way out that's how I like to view my charts for the most part unless you want to zoom in then of course that's what 
that spore. Here's some other errors you can zoom. That took it down to today, and it just cut off you know, several hours of data. But again, I want to zoom and drag. I'm clicking and dragging, pulling that all the way out. OK. Uh, I like my one-minute charts clean. Usually, I want to see price and volume and not a whole lot more. So now let's go look at the hourly chart which we can do a little bit more to. Again, a lot more volume than I need to see. I want to look at more price. So I'm going to drag that down. And now let's add another indicator. Let's come up here to the upper left-hand side and on Add Indicator, click on that. And let's throw in one of my favorites, the uh, MACD. Go ahead and add a MACD. A little bit bigger than I need, so I'm going to resize that down. Now, this is a personal preference, but I, I like I usually like to see my volume down at the bottom. I like to put my indicators up, up higher. Uh, I've yet to find a way to flip these two around. I don't believe there is. Uh, if somebody figures that out, let me know. But what I usually do is come over here. I'll just uh, get rid of volume, exit out, and then add it back. And when you do that, every time you add a new indicator, it pops up at the bottom. So that's... It's not the most direct way of sorting things. As I said, every program has its limitation, and maybe there is a way to do this, but I've yet to figure it out. Uh, what else? We need to drag the uh, time. Let's ex you know zoom this chart all the way out. Uh, so now we're going back several, actually several months in time here on this 60-minute chart, and uh, I'll let you you know at home tweak it, set it up the way you like, and now. We'll go out to the daily chart and maybe throw on, uh, let's let's put a moving average or a couple moving averages on to the price up here. We're going to go to add an indicator again, click on that, scroll down to find the moving averages or moving average. There it is. Now this window, the reason it didn't throw the moving average up right away, it wants to know do I want to put a moving average on the volume, even though there's already one there, maybe edit that, or price history. Obviously I want to do the price history here, so I click that and it put up a 50 day moving average by default. Uh, I should say a 50 period. It's, we're on a daily chart, so that is a 50 day moving average, but if you happen to be on, let's say, a, a weekly chart, uh, it's still going to give you a 50 period moving average. Um, on that weekly chart. To edit that, come up here where it added right next to price history, it threw up the moving average, click the drop down box, and let's edit that. Uh, maybe you don't like blue, yellow is your favorite color, you can make the line yellow, and maybe that's too bright, stands out a lot, so you can dim it down a little bit here with the opacity, and change the line type. Uh, be aware that the default is a simple moving average, but of course that's easy to change. You can do the drop down, change it to an exponential moving average, or whatever you like here. It's a lot of variability and flexibility in, in this program. So there's moving average. If you wanted to add another one, same way. Add indicator, moving average. Uh, where did we go? Move an average and make sure to click price and there you go. You can configure it any way you want. So now I have these different tabs up here. I won't spend any more time on the other ones for now. I'll let you go ahead and configure those. And you just click between the different time frames. Uh, what's nice about this is let's say you're on an hourly time frame. You like the settings that you're using on the hourly. Um, you don't have a tab for every single time frame available, but you want to take a look at a 30-minute chart. Within that hourly time frame, select 30 minutes. Everything that you've configured on the 60-minute chart will remain the same. If you had a moving average here, uh, let's say it was a 20-period moving average, you will have a 20-period moving average up here still. Same color, uh, everything. Um, you'll notice that the one-minute chart still doesn't have any other indicators, and if I zoomed out to a five minute frame, it's going to remain like that. So each tab is uh, a template and it saves that template. We will have to save this um, uh, this layout at the end here and once you save the layout and name it whatever you want, primary layout, uh, layout number one, uh, these tabs will be as you save them in whatever time frame. I like to keep them in order. Um, 
and of course you can customize them anytime you want just make sure to save the changes and I believe the default on this system is that it will prompt you if you make any changes to the layout it'll ask you if you do want to save those changes okay the next thing is let's take a look at uh, some additional customization to the chart if you come up here to settings uh, this is where you can toggle between using a, an arith arithmetic chart or a log chart um, typically on the longer time frames or stocks with large moves I prefer a log chart uh, but that that preference is up to you uh, another a couple other options if we go to plot style here you can toggle between a line chart candlestick chart any any type of chart you'd like to use change the colors for the candles you know the typical default is usually green and red on up and down candles but you can change that if you want um, uh, you can dim it out brighten it up let's see what else um, come down here to properties that was plot style I was in now if you go to properties you can change the color the background of the chart uh, this nice little feature here you can change the gradient uh, let's say you want a chart that goes from oops it's a little <laughs> it's a little much uh, maybe a darker color at the bottom and fade out uh, lighten or darken your grid lines I'll, I'll let you guys play around with this that's all self-explanatory symbol watermark that's that's a useful feature on these charts throws a symbol back there um, I don't like it blaring out at me I just like to see it I like it subtle enough that I can see what stock I'm looking at real quick but I don't want it uh, uh, too bright so I'll, I'll set it down there somewhere okay date margin everything else you, you can play around with those settings okay next we're gonna look at how to uh, annotate the chart how to draw trend lines other things so uh, over here on the left side as you see there's a box labeled draw click it once it gives you all your drawing tools and explains what they are uh, my preference uh, since I've been working with this long enough I know what these tools are I like to keep it small like that to save a uh, real estate for the uh, stock chart but uh, for the time being I'll leave that out so we can see what I'm working with here uh, obviously the most common tool used or at least I use in, in my drawings are trend lines so you click trend line and you can see it's taking the tool out here with you and uh, to draw a trend line right now I'm not holding the mouse down I just I clicked here it's in trend line mode as soon as I click left click on the mouse I need to hold it down and as long as I hold it's gonna draw that trend line uh, these trend lines are very easy to work with in freestockcharts.com if I didn't line it up right, let's say I hmm, does it fit better here? No, I'll try it here. You just come down here. It's going to highlight. I can drag that end. If I want to move the whole trend line, hit it anywhere in the middle. And as you see, you can move the whole trend line there. Tweak the top, larger, smaller. Very, very easy to work with. Uh, a horizontal line. Let's throw a horizontal line in here. H line, and click and hold down move it around to where you want and then release and of course you can always come back to it click move uh, if you want to make it go away click on it once and release don't hold down and there it is remove that easy uh, fibs let's let's draw a few fibs here Fibonacci retracements go down now one of the things I like to do, uh, let's say you're a big FIB trader. I, I, I do use FIB somewhat, and I know uh, some people uh, really focus on, on, on FIBs in their trading. And I know a lot of FIB traders who use Fibonacci clusters. Instead of just one group of FIBs from the top down on a move, they'll look at different clusters. And when you do that with FIBs, it tends to get busy. So I go down here to the same low and I want to hit each level and now you have fibs all over the place so what you can do is go back to the original fib line the line that you dragged here left click on it edit and change the color and now you can you know tell your different lines apart I'll use that with trend lines as well maybe you don't want to see the 786 fib uncheck that and it won't show up here so a lot of a lot of flexibility with these lines and uh, again two ways to get rid of either click on it 
remove, or there's an eraser tool over here. We want to move that around and erase some of these trend lines that I drew. Uh, we can do that as well. Uh, which brings me to a good point. If you used a, a tool like this eraser, it's not want it doesn't want to go away on its own. Uh, the way to get rid of that, come back up here to the crosshairs and, and check on either the regular default crosshair, which is going to show you the price on the upper left hand side, um, price wherever the crosshairs meet, and there's your open close where the moving average was, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, that sometimes gets in the way of the chart for me, so I often use plain crosshairs. That's going to give you the crosshairs without the box, the info box. And that's, again, also a way to get rid of uh, if you're stuck on one of these and you can't figure out how to get rid of it. Just come up here, come up there and click on the crosshairs. Okay. Okay, folks, I see that I've crossed the 15 minute mark, minute mark here, and my goal was to wrap this thing up in under 15 minutes, so I get an F on that one. Uh, one last thing to cover, and again, I'll do the next segment. We'll go a little bit into those other uh, options that are available available here. Uh, let's, let's look at trend line alerts, because this is a great feature on freestockcharts.com. Uh, let's say we're going to draw a bullish rising wedge here. Uh, Side note, uh, I drew a trend line here, and I have two choices. I can go back, click it again. I have to come all the way back to the left of the screen, or obviously you can't see this off screen. I'm going to hold the control button down on my keyboard. This is a shortcut I've learned. And then left click the mouse. Whatever the last tool was I used, free stock charts will give me that again. So in other words, if I were to have, if I had created a horizontal line here, Let's just do that real quick, put a horizontal line, and I wanted one more, hold control down, and boom, it's going to give me a horizontal line. Uh, that's a very slick feature if you're drawing a lot of trend lines. Okay, so now we have this uh, bullish falling wedge here on whatever symbol we're looking at. I'm not even paying attention to that. And, uh, oh, because my watermark's gone. Let's, let's, let's put that watermark back. Property watermark. There we go. Okay, we had the RWM up here. So I want a, an alert if the trend line breaks. So I'm going to right click on the line. I'm sorry, left click, highlight the line, left click, and choose set alert. It's that easy. Do you want to be alerted only one time if that line breaks, which is usually sufficient. Sufficient. Sometimes we'll get a break and then a pull back in, so you can have it every time it crosses that line if you want to get an alert. And do you want it to expire a day from now, a month, a year, whatever you want there. You choose that. Um, there is a setting somewhere in here, and I'll have to cover that in the next round. Uh, you can have your alerts either pop up. They will pop up on this program when it's running you're going to get an alert there um, you can also have it send you an email alert which is very convenient just in case you have this chart minimized your speakers are off you don't hear the alert go off uh, they'll shoot you an email to your email address right away great feature okay so let's leave that alert there and Okay, folks, uh, I think that's it for now. If there's anything else that comes up, I know there are a ton of other features here, and I'm probably forgetting half of those, but uh, at least this should shortcut you um, several months. These are things I've picked up over the years, and again, maybe they're they're buried in the instructional videos at freestockcharts.com, but uh, a lot of this I found from trial and error many, many, many hours on the computer, which is what I do. All right, so finally we need to come up here before you finish playing around, click File, and then save that layout. Um, you know, to, uh, layout number one, whatever you want to call it, layout two and save that. Uh, one other feature to cover before I let you go is, I didn't hit on this yet, when you look up top here on the upper left hand side, these are the tabbed windows right now. As I said, I'm toggling between five minute chart, daily charts. Uh, they also have these grid charts, which are nice. Now it took the, the four time periods I have. If you look right here, here's that five minute, well, this was a, originally a one minute chart. I had changed it uh, during the video to a five minute chart. There's that 15 minute chart. Uh, daily, weekly, and a nice snapshot view. You can look at them this way as well. Uh, you want to have your daily chart up here and your intraday charts here. Very, very flexible. Um, and uh, that that should be it. Okay, I'll try to get another video out uh, sometime this week on the rest of the features on freestockcharts.com. This is Randy from Right Side of the Chart. I hope you enjoyed it.